time to ride or die. Yeah. Fist bump. I can't get my fist is all the way in there. I turned to the Will Smith's fist. Uh, bad boys, ride or die. I got back from this last night. I did not do an out of the theater reaction because it was already released, so I just chose not to. Um, should note, I have never actually seen the first three. I intended to see the most recent one that came out a few years ago, but then the pandemic hit and I just never got around to it. Uh, and I think my reasoning for not seeing the third one was because I hadn't seen the other two. I think I'm going to make it a rule now that if I'm capable of seeing a previous entry in a film series for a film coming out, I am going to watch it beforehand just so I can have better context. Because I at least knew of some of the things from the previous film that had happened, um, like the death of their captain, his son, all that. So I at least knew about that going in. Um... And let's get it right out of the way, right now, right now. The success of this film is going to hinge on how much people have forgiven Will Smith for the Chris Rock Oscars incident. It, it's going to hinge on it, absolutely. And let's be very clear, many of us might be willing to forgive him at this point. I personally am like, all right, he can have his career back. He's he's suffered quite a bit, actually, and I think uh, enough. Now, let me give, give, be clear about that, too. I still think he owes Chris Rock a direct apology. Not a on-camera whatever apology, but meet him face-to-face -face and actually be a man about it apology. But otherwise, the guy's lost work. He's no longer allowed the Oscars for 10 years. Yeah, no, I think Will Smith has suffered a decent... His a lot of the issues of his marriage has been made a lot more public now. So, yeah, I think he's suffered quite a bit. So, you know what? I'm okay to welcome him back at this point. But that's me. You may feel different. That's fine. You can't expect everyone to feel the same. Uh, but based on just what the this week, uh, what the Friday numbers were, it does look like it's going to be hitting right where they said, between I think like 50 and 70 million, which is a good number for this film. So it looks like it's going to at least have a good opening this weekend. But to the point, what did I think about the movie? Well, as someone who's never watched one of these movies, one of the Bad Boy films, I kind of want to go back and watch this, the, the series now because I had a lot of fun with this movie. It is far from perfect. Oh, it is far from perfect. Uh, but it is a fun 90s kind of 90s. Uh, well, actually, when was the original Bad Boys? Was that early 2000s? I want to say it was early 2000s. Uh, Bad Boys, hold on. Bad Boys, watch go. And you know it damn well they play that song. Um, they always do. Uh, bad Boys, watch go, watch. First Bad Boys was 1995. Why do we feel old, folks? <laughs> I was little more than a babe at that point. Uh, I was like, I think six or seven at that point. Uh, yeah, the original it was a it was a 90s franchise, Bad Boys, and then you had uh, Bad Boys 2, which was lit, which was whew, eight years later. Some people say that one's better. Some people say that one's worse. That one's a very um, you know, yeah. Here, there, and then 17 years later, we get Bad Boys for Life, which you would think the, like the last one, the fourth one, would have been that one, and this one would have been right or not. Yeah, either way, whatever. Um, so regardless, Bad Boys Ride or Die is definitely a throwback to the 90s, early 2000s action film. Definitely has a lot of those isms in there. If I didn't know better, and I know better because I did check who directed those films, um. I would have thought, and there was apparently a video game in 2004, Bad Boys Miami Takedown. Um, if I didn't know better, I would have thought they were directed by Michael Bay, but they are not directed by Michael Bay. To the At least I don't think so. Is the second one directed by Michael Bay? Uh, produced by Jerry Bruckheimer. Directed by Vincent. Michael, okay. The se okay, my girlfriend and I were having a discussion about this. It seems that the second one was directed by Michael Bay. So I'll have to give her credit on that later on. Although they were they were both directed by Michael Bay. Why did they think they were directed by someone else? I don't know. So yeah, they definitely have the Bayisms. The the other two, um, uh, uh, at least the other two. Well, actually, no. Yeah, this one, the third one, was not done by Michael Bay. Um, at least I don't think it was. Uh, the Jerry Bruckheimer, dark screenplay, uh, director, director, director. Who seriously? Who directed this damn thing? Um. Produced by, directed by, yeah, okay, yeah, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't directed by Michael Bay. The first two were directed by Michael Bay. This one was not directed by uh, Michael Bay. Regardless, um, it's a big throwback to those films. Uh, the It gets nonsensical. It really gets wacky. But these films oh, kind of did that to begin with. 
from what I understand. Uh, that being said, I like ultimately where they kind of take the direction. I mean, they're got they're now guys in their older. I think a line in the first in the last movie was we got more years behind us than we do ahead of us, and they're definitely guys now in their fifties. You know, they're still they're still the bad boys, but they're not they're not the men they used to be. At least uh, at least in terms of hell, like Martin Lawrence at one point has a heart attack in the film, and part of his character for the rest of the film is having feeling like he knows the universe at this point and he it's both hilarious but if you were to deal with your friend who had gone through this and they were acting like this you'd want to punch him in the face <laughs> you really would because he he is getting like if i if mark for god is if, I, if mark for whatever reason had this happen to him and i had to deal with him like this i might i might hit him i might or at least i might smack him just be like Will you fucking step out of there? God damn it. It's like, you're telling me you can't die. It's like, I can't die. I'm like, so if I shoot you in the face, you won't die. You ain't gonna, sh fate says you ain't gonna shoot me in the face. But if I were to, it's like, mm, if I fa if I, the fate odds are in my favor that you won't. <laughs> like, it's like, he's kind of, he's being an ass, but it's so stupid and hilarious of how he's being an ass. And I think it's like he's on this new diet because of the heart attack where he can't have sugar or fat. And by the way, that can be healthy. My dad had a heart attack, so I know about this. The whole idea is you don't cut everything out. You just cut down things. You gotta be, you gotta stress eating some healthier things, being a bit better about your diet and the way you're handling yourself there. But you don't have to cut everything out. That's why I went complete deep six on that. Um... But yeah, it, it follows up pretty close to where we left off in the last movie, from what I know. His son is in jail or prison at the moment. Um, they He's getting married, apparently, to his physical therapist, because if you haven't seen the last one, he got sh I do know a little bit of the last one. His son, he got shot, and apparently he um, uh, found love with his physical therapist. So even while some, Mike's getting married in this one, and it, the reveal that... The captain was dirty. Uh, Joe uh, Joe Piscopo, I think it is, or Joe Pagliano. I can't. I think it's Pagliano, right? Um. Uh. Well. Okay. Well. What's the? Oh yeah. Joe Pagliano. Yeah. Now, to be fair, he's. It, we know he's not. If he's being framed, why he's being framed? Who's doing it? That's up for the like you know us as the audience to you know follow. Uh, you got the new bad guy, one of the one of the new bad guys. There's a hidden bad guy, which you can kind of see from a mile away. But um, I'm not going to say who that was. But um, uh, played by Eric Dan, who I'm like, where do I know that guy from? Oh, he was on Euphoria. There was, oh, yeah, he was that guy in Euphoria. Good actor. Good actor. He, he, he plays creepy as well as kind of being badass very well. But at the same time, like, hey. <laughs> like, I, did, I only have seen some of Euphoria, but I'm like, Oy, that's not a that's not a show for the faint of heart and his character like oh, oh. but um no he's really good he's very he's that creepy you know ex-military kind of merc guy and it works the action the action is unique i think for a movie like this and in general because they do a lot of single takes and apparently i didn't see this but there's a behind the scenes featurette for the film where Will Smith's got the camera in front of him but anytime he goes to shoot like shoot at someone the camera actually flips and you get that view so when you're seeing those shots in the trailer where the gun is like you see the gun you follow the gun it just moves and you see the camera and it's pointing out like the camera's apparently doing that at least to a certain extent that's impressive because there's some fun wacky shenanigans in this the final fight where you're this, which is where you see a lot of that happens that's really good I think like one of the standout action moments though in the film for me honestly is that plane fight that plane fight is really cool uh it's very reminiscent a little bit of the mummy plane fight with tom cruise not a fantastic movie but a great stunt uh it's not quite as good as that but it's still definitely got some air of that to it uh we got some of the returning characters particularly some of the guys they introduced in the new film um we got obviously returning characters from the original franchise as well, uh, so we got a lot of returns that I wish I knew more about to appreciate it more. But still, for what we have, what we got, I really had a good time. Now I'll say this: the jokes aren't always landing, and I heard that the first like half hour is not that good. I didn't think the first half hour was that bad, but it is a bit clunky. I, you know, I think that. 
it's I wouldn't even say it's badly paced. I just think it's not all the jokes are landing. It is a little like they're just trying to get you through like the story to get you to the main story. But once we kind of get into he's been framed. All right, let's get into it. Then the movie really kicks off and then it really like finds his heartbeat. Um, there is no post credit scene, by the way. There is like a little tag at the end of the, before the credits start to roll. Um, which is a great nod callback to a scene later on because it involves Martin Lawrence's son-in-law, who's in the Marine. <laughs> you see in the trailer, it's like, you know, you need to get a job. I'm a Marine, sir. It's like, then you need to deploy. I just came back from the end. Well, thank you for your service. <laughs> and he gets a scene later on, which kind of just really makes you, really makes you go, F yeah. And like, like <laughs> it's like, it's a home invasion scene. <laughs> and you, and they're stuck watching what's happening. And Martin Lawrence is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, go, my snacks are your snacks. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, man. It's actually, it's really good. It's like, that's probably maybe my, I might take you back to Plains uh, comment, actually. That might be my favorite action scene. Ultimately, it's, it's not going for any awards. It's not going to make my top 10 of the year, but it's not going to be my top 10 worst either. It's a good, unless I have a really low year this year. Like, right now, if I were to, um, you know, seeing as we're going to wrap this up now, uh, I'll talk about the few trailers I can remember uh, seeing in just a second. But seeing as um, we're wrapping this up, let me just see how many I would even consider putting in my worst of the year so far. Because honestly, it has not been. I'm not granted. I can only see so many films. So keep that in mind. But it has not been a bad year. It's been a pretty fun, solid year for movies this year, if I'm going to be honest. So let me see here. Where is my uh, movie playlist? Uh, let's see. Uh, come on, there. Nope, that's Death Battle Reactions. Where? It's probably near the bottom of uh, the playlist. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find some movies. Sorry, it's like it's like it's everything's got it like has to like the thumbnails have to load up uh, while I'm doing <laughs> while I'm like scrolling down the entire page. I would. Of course, you're the very freaking bottom of the page. Okay, so in terms of, like, any bad movies I have currently seen this year, let's see here, um, or anything that we theoretically would be in the top ten worst of the year. Uh, Imaginary could definitely may be there. Driveway Dolls might be Madam Web, certainly is. Mean Girls, uh, Night Swim. Oh, yeah, the Night Swim. Uh, so, I mean, I, that's five right there. I mean, is this film, does this, is this film bad enough right now that if I were to suddenly just do the worst of the year, would it be on there? In the sense that I haven't seen a lot of bad things this year yet, maybe, but it probably would be on the very outskirts, like it might be number 10. I'd have, and I, then not only would it be number 10, I'd have to, or not only have I not seen a lot of bad things, I'd have to figure out something to fill out that remaining five spots. So, uh, cause like right, right out of the gate, the five I just talked about, those probably would be in my, uh, top 10 or those are probably going to stay in the top 10 unless something drastic happens. Um, in uh, which case then I have to change it up. But in terms of, uh, trailers, we got Venom, the last dance, which I am, I am very, why the hell is, um, like, Geralt or Revere Zompok took creation video in the, in this playlist. I have no idea why it ended up here, but let's see here. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, Venom the Last Dance, that's, I mean, look, I like the other Venom films quite a bit, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious how they're going to wrap it up, and they said, my home has found us, Eddie. Are you going to bring Null into this? Please, God, don't bring Null into this. Not because I don't want to see Null, but because I do want to see Null, and you can't bring Null in for, like, you know, a one-off villain, like a minor villain in the last film of a franchise. Null is, like, if they are able to use Null in the MCU, he's an Avenger-level threat. That's someone you need. Um, by the by, uh, like, nothing else. The Watchers could be in the top. Uh, 10, by the way, worst of the year. And that's because it wasn't bad, it just wasn't the best. But anyway, yeah, um, Venom Last Dance, we got uh, Alien Romulus, the full Red Band trailer, which 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, I'm going to be there. You know it. Uh, so there's that. Then there, then we got the killing game, the one with Dave Bautista who plays the assassin who's dying, and he has to basically put the um, um, uh, the hit on himself, only to find out he's not dying. So that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Wolves, the one with Brad Pitt and George Clooney, where they're both uh, fixers and they're both assigned to the same job. So that that looks like a lot of fun. Um, and there was like eight. I know there was like eight trailers. I'm trying to see if I can remember. Oh, Quiet Place Day One. Where like I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also looking forward to us being done with that trailer too. Of like just seeing that trailer again. So yeah, I'm I'm, word, I'm looking forward to when that's gonna be over. Uh, oh, Blink Twice, the Channing Tatum one, where they're like, he's like a millionaire, they're on an island, there's some shady shit going on. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Is it like voodoo or something? I'm, I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but there, there was that one as well. Uh, and there was like two other ones that, uh, oh, um, is it Don't Blink? Not Don't Blink, sorry, um. Speak No Evil? Oh, no, we, that, was, that was attached to The Watchers. So, Speak No Evil looks very creepy and unsettling. And I know for a fact it's actually based on a foreign film. Uh, and I know how that foreign film ends. Which makes, which makes me wonder, how is this one going to end? Are they going to maybe do a little bit of an update for a different jo audience? Or are we going to keep the original ending? Because if we're keeping the original ending... Yeah, anyway. Um, let me just put this way. The original ending is fucked. <laughs> like, holy crap. Um, is there anything else I can think of that we're getting, um, within time frame that I'm forgetting the trailer on? Because I feel like I'm forgetting something and I can't, I know I'm forgetting too, because I was literally ticking them off with my finger. I still need to remember to bring the damn notebook so I can write things down. Uh, we didn't get any animated stuff because it's not that type of uh, movie to be advertising that stuff in. Uh, uh, we didn't even, Oh, we got that. We got a little Deadpool. We got that with Deadpool Wolverine uh, trailer where he, they scream at the audience and like, well, "Hey, Bob, this is a movie theater, not your, <laughs> not your like mom's whatever." So shut your fucking phone off. We're gonna beep, beep, beep. I'm gonna beep so far off your beep. <laughs> uh, oh, oh God, uh, you know you're so loud. It made my dick vibrate. At least I think it was my dick. Um, but, yeah. So, either way, uh, that those are the trailers that I can remember. Bad Boys, Ride or Die. Enjoyed the film. I had a good time. I recommend it. It's a good summer action flick. Till then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys for the next one. And the what if. Don't worry, you'll be out today.